starting over at 32 years old, can you do it? Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. It is never too late. Never. As long as you are alive and you have free will, you can always start over. Always. Always. This video is actually motivated 100% by an email I received from a subscriber here on the channel. I'm going to start this video by briefly reading the email. I have not read the entire email yet. It's more fun if I kind of just read it while I make the video. So if you have any advice for this person, please leave a comment in the comment section below. The subject is career advice at the age of 32. Dear Math Sorcerer, I hope this message finds you well. My name is blank, and I'm enrolling in an online undergraduate program in computational mathematics. However, I am reaching out to seek your advice due to a few reasons. At 32 years old, I am enthusiastic about returning to education and pursuing this field. However, I am aware that my current foundation in mathematics is not as strong as I would like it to be. I believe my mathematical level is roughly at the level of high school algebra. This has led me to second guess my decision, as I want to ensure that I am making the right choice for my academic and professional future. I would greatly appreciate your insight on the following. Here are the questions. Do you think it is feasible for someone with a weaker mathematical background to succeed in a program like this? Or would you recommend that I spend some time studying on my own to strengthen my foundation and catch up before enrolling? Or is it better to dive in and start the program addressing any challenges as they arise? Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate any guidance you can offer. I look forward to hearing from you. Best regards from Columbia, and then he signs his name. So first, let me say thank you very, very much uh, for sending uh, this message. I, I really appreciate the email. And I do have some advice, definitely, 100%. So your question is, is it feasible for someone with a weaker mathematical background to succeed in a program like this? Yes, but I think what you're really asking is, should you start now, right? Or, as you say in your follow-up here, or should you do some self-study first? So it depends highly on the structure of the program, okay? So for example, in the United States, if you have a high school diploma or a GED, you can go to a community college, you can pay like 30 to 50 bucks, take a test, and sign up for classes. And if you're poor, they sometimes pay for everything. And if you have money, it's still pretty inexpensive for community colleges in most states. And if you're terrible at math, they put you in classes that are very basic. They have classes that review like high school algebra and like even stuff before that in college. And so you can actually learn that in college. And so you can do anything, right? When I started, I had nothing. I just had a GED and I was just like you, exactly your situation. Except I wanted to get a PhD in computer science. And I just, I knew nothing. I knew no math. I knew how to program in C because I taught myself. And then I discovered that people went to school for that. So I thought, oh, wow, people go to college to learn C programming? <sighs> well, I already know this stuff. So I felt like a rock star, you know? I was the, the guy raising my hand in that C programming class every, I sat in the front, very annoying. So if you have the opportunity to take those really basic classes at your university or college in Columbia, then jump in right away, my friend, do it, do it. If you don't have that opportunity, here's what I want you to do. I want you to find the syllabus for your program. And then this, this is good advice for 
anyone embarking on any academic experience. Find that syllabus, okay? Find the books that are being used for that class. Go on Amazon, look for the books. They're probably going to be very expensive. Buy used copies if you can afford them. If you can't, then look for other books with similar titles on similar topics and buy used copies of those. In fact, I recommend doing that anyways. Buy as many used copies <laughs> of books as you can on those subjects. Surround yourself with mathematics books, with old, cheap math books. Some of them are expensive, but yes. And that gives you the resources and you know exactly what to study. Then you start doing self-study. You start, you start studying what you need for the program. D don't go back and review your algebra yet. Start, start by looking at the mathematics that you're going to be learning. So do the program before doing the program. Unless of course, unless of course, you have the opportunity to take those classes that will help you catch up on call. If you have that opportunity, go back and start now. Don't, do not choose self-study over going to college if you have the opportunity to take those courses in college. Because as much as I love self-study, and as much as self-study is great, you are going to do better if you go to college and take a pre-algebra class than if you do self-study. Why? Because math is hard. Right? It's hard. If it, think about it. If mathematics wasn't hard, then there wouldn't be any math teachers. You know, no one would watch my videos. Oh, calculus? Psh, I can learn that in five minutes. No, it doesn't work that way, right? You know, that's why people go to school for years. It's hard. It's extremely hard. So that's my advice, and I think it can help you a lot. I think it can help you a lot. So again, just to recap, if your school offers the opportunity for you to catch up while in school, go to school. And I know it's going to cost money maybe. I know it's going to take your time, but it's better. Even just the whole experience of it, my friend, it's better. It's worth it. Trust me. It's worth it, 100%. Some people won't do it because, at least in the U.S., for those basic classes that I talk about that we have the opportunity to take them and all that, well, they don't give you credit for those. Th those don't count as college credit, right? So you're just, so they cost money. If you're, if, you don't, if you're not super poor, you have to pay for them, and you don't really get college credit for them. So it's like, it doesn't feel like you're getting anything, but you are. You're getting a real teacher. You're getting structure. You're getting lectures. Even if they're not good lectures, it's better than no lectures. You're meeting people who are also embarking on the same journey. So it's 100%, it's a positive experience, worth it. If you don't have that opportunity, okay, then look at exactly what you need to study, which you should do anyway. You should, you should be looking at those books and buy some of those books and then jump into that and see how it goes. If you jump into that mathematics and you don't understand, then you need to backtrack. Like, oh, this requires calculus. Okay, what's calculus? Okay and take a step back to calculus. You can actually start learning calculus as long as you know some basic algebra. You could use books like um, Brief Applied Calculus by Rocket and Beersford. It's a really good one. Uh, and that one, uh, it doesn't require any trig. So it's like, oh, you can learn calculus day one, just like that, five minutes. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyways, that's my advice, my friend. I hope it helps you, and I, I think you got this. You got, I think you asked a good question, though, because, you know, you're jumping into a hard program. You know, I, I compare it to you know, someone trying to go to graduate school for mathematics and their, their math is at the high school algebra level. They, they, they would not make it, right? This doesn't, doesn't work. But you can start college and take the courses and work your way up, right? You can work your way up. And a lot of people do that, okay? A lot of people do that. They'll, they'll take classes and, and they're just slowly working their way up. Some people take one, one class a semester I've had students that are your age and much, much older, and they'll do like one class a semester for like years, and they'll, they'll finish. They'll, they'll just grind it out, you know, small steps, right? Do you have any advice for this person who wants to do computational mathematics? If so, leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. If you want to learn math, I have courses. They're math courses, uh, which you can take as well. <laughs> so, yeah. So. Uh, they're on algebra, calculus, uh, differential equations, uh, trigonometry, abstract algebra, advanced calculus, tons of math courses. They're on Udemy, but if you get them, please use my links. They're in the description of this video or on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. The key takeaway from this video should be that it is never too late to start. Don't be afraid. Jump in. But 
jump in with caution, right? As this viewer mentions, right, he's trying to join a very tough program. It's, a, it's an undergraduate program in computational math, but it's hard. So you just want to make sure that you have the opportunity to, to take those classes while in college. And so if you're in the US, jump in. In Colombia, I don't know exactly how the educational system works, but if you know, please leave a comment because I'm really, really curious. As always, keep doing mathematics.